Portraits of the Historical Jesus refers to the various biographies of Jesus that have been constructed in the three separate scholarly quests for the historical Jesus that have taken place in the past two centuries, each with distinct characteristics and developing new and different research criteria. The portraits of Jesus that have been constructed in these processes have often differed from each other, and from the dogmatic image portrayed in the Gospel accounts, these portraits include that of Jesus as an apocalyptic prophet, charismatic healer, cynic philosopher, Jewish messiah and prophet of social change, but there is little scholarly agreement on a single portrait, or the methods needed to construct it. There are, however, overlapping attributes among the various portraits, and scholars who differ on some attributes may agree on others. By the 21st century, scholars began to focus on what is historically probable and plausible about Jesus. Topic: <laughs> Historical elements. Topic: most contemporary scholars of antiquity agree that Jesus existed, and most biblical scholars and classical historians see the theories of his non-existence as effectively refuted. We have no indication that writers in antiquity who opposed Christianity questioned the existence of Jesus. There is, however, widespread disagreement among scholars on the details of the life of Jesus mentioned in the Gospel narratives, and on the meaning of his teachings. Scholars differ on the historicity of specific episodes described in the biblical accounts of Jesus, and historians tend to look upon supernatural or miraculous claims about Jesus as questions of faith, rather than historical fact. There is no physical or archaeological evidence for Jesus, and all the sources we have are documentary. The sources for the historical Jesus are mainly Christian writings, such as the Gospels and the purported letters of the Apostles and also Islamic texts such as the Quran and Hadith where he was referred to as Isa, the son of Mary. Many scholars agree that Jesus is Isa although Jesus and Isa sometimes differ in actions and sayings. The authenticity and reliability of these sources has been questioned by many scholars, and few events mentioned in the Gospels are universally accepted. In conjunction with biblical sources, three mentions of Jesus in non Christian sources have been used in the historical analyses of the existence of Jesus. These are two passages in the writings of the Jewish historian Josephus, and one from the Roman historian Tacitus. Although the authenticity of all three passages has been disputed to varying degrees, most biblical scholars believe that all three are at least partially authentic. The historical analysis techniques used by biblical scholars have been questioned, and according to James Dunn it is not possible to construct from the available data a Jesus who will be the real Jesus. W. R. Herzog has stated that what we call the historical Jesus is the composite of the recoverable bits and pieces of historical information and speculation about him that we assemble, construct, and reconstruct. For this reason, the historical Jesus is, in Meyer's words, a modern abstraction and construct. The Christ myth theory, namely the proposition that Jesus of Nazareth never existed, or if he did, he had virtually nothing to do with the founding of Christianity and the accounts in the Gospels, has very little scholarly support. Nonetheless, despite divergent scholarly opinions on the construction of portraits of the historical Jesus, almost all modern scholars consider his baptism and crucifixion to be historical facts. Topic: Other possibly historical elements. Topic. In addition to the two elements of baptism and crucifixion, scholars attribute varying levels of certainty to six other aspects of the life of Jesus, although there is no universal agreement among scholars on these items. Jesus called disciples. John P. Meyer sees the calling of disciples a natural consequence of the information available about Jesus. N. T. Wright accepts that there were twelve disciples, but holds that the list of their names cannot be determined with certainty. John Dominic Crossan disagrees, stating that Jesus did not call disciples and had an open to all egalitarian approach, imposed no hierarchy and preached to all in equal terms. Jesus caused a controversy at the temple. Jesus was a Galilean Jew who was born between 7 and 2 BC and died 30-36 AD. Jesus lived only in Galilee and Judea. Most scholars reject that there is any evidence that an adult Jesus traveled or studied outside Galilee and Judea. The Talmud refers to Jesus the Nazarene several times, and scholars such as Andreas Kostenberger and Robert van Voorst hold that some of these references are to Jesus. 
Nazareth is not mentioned in the Hebrew Bible and the Christian Gospels portray it as an insignificant village, John 1 verse 46 asking, "'Can any good thing come out of Nazareth?' Craig S. Keener states that it is rarely disputed that Jesus was from Nazareth, an obscure small village not worthy of invention. Gerd Thyssen concurs with that conclusion. The Quran mentions, "'Jesus son of Mary' 14 times, and depicts him as a distinguished prophet, though not the "'Son of God' nor does it refer to Nazareth. Jesus spoke Aramaic and that he may have also spoken Hebrew and Greek. The languages spoken in Galilee and Judea during the first century include the Semitic Aramaic and Hebrew languages as well as Greek, with Aramaic being the predominant language. Most scholars agree that during the early part of the first century, Aramaic was the mother tongue of virtually all women in Galilee and Judea. After his death his disciples continued, and some of his disciples were persecuted. Topic. Chronology Topic. The approximate chronology of Jesus can be estimated from non Christian sources, and confirmed by correlating them with New Testament accounts. The baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist places him in the Baptist's era, whose chronology can be determined from Josephus' reference Antiquities .5 to the marriage of Herod Antipas and Herodias and the subsequent defeat of Herod by Aretas IV of Nabatea in AD 36. Most scholars date the marriage of Herod and Herodias, which Josephus relates to the execution of the Baptist by Herod, as AD 28-35, indicating a date somewhat earlier than that for the baptism of Jesus by John. A number of approaches have been used to estimate the date of the crucifixion of Jesus. One approach relies on the dates of the prefecture of Pontius Pilate who was governor of Roman Judea from 26 AD until 36 AD, after which he was replaced by Marcellus, 36-37 AD. Another approach which provides an upper bound for the year of death of Jesus is working backwards from the chronology of Apostle Paul, which can be historically pegged to his trial in Corinth by Roman proconsul Gallio, the date of whose reign is confirmed in the Delphi inscription discovered in the 20th century at the Temple of Apollo. Two independent astronomical methods one going back to Isaac Newton have also been used, suggesting the same year, i.e. 33 AD. Scholars generally agree that Jesus died between 30 to 36 AD. Topic: <inaudible> Judean background. Topic: The historical and cultural context of Roman Judea and the tensions in the region at that time provide a historical context to descriptions of the life of Jesus. Following the successful Maccabean revolt against the Seleucids, there was a growth of an apocalyptic view that the world was either in or approaching the end times, when a Messiah would restore the kingdom of David. In the time of Jesus, adulthood Judea was under Roman imperial rule. Roman prefects were appointed to the territory to maintain order and collect taxes, and to control Jerusalem through a political appointee, the high priest. The imposition of a Roman system of taxation, and conflict between the Jews' demand for religious independence and Rome's efforts to impose a common system of governance meant there was continuous underlying tension in the area, in the Judaic religion of Jesus. Day Second Temple Judaism, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were the two significant and opposing power groups. The Sadducees were generally high-ranking priests with wealth and nobility who often favored the upper classes and had a strict interpretation of the Torah. The Pharisees who used a more flexible interpretation of the Torah were formed as a separatist movement and had a somewhat more democratic approach which favored the common people. The Sadducees had significant power based on their close association with the Jerusalem Temple and by virtue of the seats they held in the Sanhedrin, which was the governing council for the Jews. Archaeological studies The 21st century has witnessed an increase in scholarly interest in the integrated use of archaeology as an additional research component in arriving at a better understanding of the historical Jesus by illuminating the socio-economic and political background of his age. James Charlesworth states that few modern scholars now want to overlook the archaeological discoveries that clarify the nature of life in Galilee and Judea during the time of Jesus. Jonathan Reed states that chief contribution of archaeology to the study of the historical Jesus is the reconstruction of his social world. 
An example archaeological item that Reed mentions is the 1961 discovery of the Pilate Stone, which mentions the Roman prefect Pontius Pilate, by whose order Jesus was crucified. David Gowler states that an interdisciplinary scholarly study of archaeology, textual analysis, and historical context can shed light on Jesus and his teachings. An example is the archaeological studies at Capernaum. Despite the frequent references to Capernaum in the New Testament, little is said about it there. However, recent archaeological evidence show that unlike earlier assumptions, Capernaum was poor and small, without even a forum or agora. This archaeological discovery thus resonates well with the scholarly view that Jesus advocated reciprocal sharing among the destitute in that area of Galilee. Other archaeological findings support the wealth of the ruling priests in Judea at the beginning of the first century. Topic. Language, race and appearance Topic. Per the Bible, Jesus grew up in Galilee and much of his ministry took place there. The language spoken in Galilee and Judea during the first century amongst the common people was most frequently the Semitic Aramaic tongue, and most scholars support the theory that Jesus spoke Aramaic, although he may have also spoken Hebrew and perhaps had some fluency in Greek. James D. G. Dunn states that there is substantial consensus that Jesus gave his teachings in Aramaic. The Galilean dialect of Aramaic was clearly distinguishable from the Judean dialect. Despite the lack of direct biblical or historical references, various theories about the race of Jesus have been advanced and debated. These claims have been mostly subjective, based on cultural stereotypes and societal trends rather than on scientific analysis. In a review of the state of modern scholarship, Amy Jill Levine stated, Beyond recognizing that Jesus was Jewish rarely does scholarship address what being Jewish means. Topic. Profession Topic. Jesus is identified as the son of a tecton and in Mark chapter 6 verse 3 a crowd surmises that Jesus was a tecton himself. Tecton has been traditionally translated into English as carpenter but as a rather general word from the same root that gives us technical and technology that could cover makers of objects in various materials, including builders. But the specific association with woodworking was a constant in early Christian writings. Justin Martyr died c. 165 wrote that Jesus made yokes and plows, and there are similar early references. Other scholars have argued that Tecton could equally mean a highly skilled craftsman in wood or the more prestigious metal, perhaps running a workshop with several employees, and noted sources recording the shortage of skilled artisans at the time. Geza Vermes has stated that the terms carpenter and son of a carpenter are used in the Jewish Talmud to signify a very learned man, and he suggests that a description of Joseph as Nagar, a carpenter, could indicate that he was considered wise and highly literate in the Torah. Debate exists about the existence of Nazareth at the time of Joseph and Jesus, as it was not mentioned in any contemporary source. At best it was an obscure village in Galilee, about 65 kilometers from the holy city of Jerusalem, which is only later mentioned in surviving non-Christian texts and documents. Archaeology over most of the site is made very difficult by subsequent building, but from what has been excavated and tombs in the area around the village, it is estimated that the population was at most about 400. It was, however, only about 6 kilometers from the city of Tizipori ancient Sepphoris, which was destroyed by the Romans in 4 BCE, and thereafter was expensively rebuilt. Jonathan L. Reed states that the analysis of the landscape and other evidence suggest that in that Jesus and Joseph's lifetime Nazareth was oriented towards the nearby city. Literacy There are strong indications of a high illiteracy rate among the lower socioeconomic classes in the Roman Empire at large with various scholars estimating 3% to 10% literacy rates. However, the Babylonian Talmud which dates from the 3rd to 5th centuries states that the Jews had schools in nearly every one of their towns. Geoffrey Bromiley states that as a religion of the book, Judaism emphasized reading and study, and people would read to themselves in a loud voice, rather than silently, a practice encouraged Arabin 54a by the rabbis. James D. G. Dunn states that Second Temple Judaism placed a great deal of emphasis on the study of Torah, and the writing prophets 
of Judaism assumed that sections of the public could read. Dunn and separately Donahue and Harrington refer to the statement by first-century historian Josephus in Against Apian that the "...law requires that they children be taught to read," as an indication of high literacy rate among some first-century Jews. Richard A. Horsley, on the other hand, states that the Josephus reference to learn grammata may not necessarily refer to reading and may be about an oral tradition there are a number of passages from the gospels which state or imply that jesus could read the jesus seminar stated that references in the gospels to jesus reading and writing may be fictions john dominic crossan who views jesus as a peasant states that he would not have been literate craig a evans states that it should not be assumed that jesus was a peasant and that his extended travels may indicate some measure of financial means Evans states that existing data indicate that Jesus could read scripture, paraphrase and debate it, but that does not imply that he received formal scribal training, given the divergence of his views from the existing religious background of his time. James Dunn states that it is, quite credible, that Jesus could read. John P. Meyer further concludes that the literacy of Jesus probably extended to the ability to read and comment on sophisticated theological and literary works. Methods of research Topic. Since the 18th century, scholars have taken part in three separate quests for the historical Jesus, attempting to reconstruct various portraits of his life using historical methods. While textual criticism or lower criticism had been practiced for centuries, a number of approaches to historical analysis and a number of criteria for evaluating the historicity of events emerged as of the 18th century, as a series of quests for the historical Jesus took place. At each stage of development, scholars suggested specific forms and methodologies of analysis and specific criteria to be used to determine historical validity. Topic. Criticism of research methods Topic. A number of scholars have criticized historical Jesus research for religious bias and lack of methodological soundness, and some have argued that modern biblical scholarship is insufficiently critical and sometimes amounts to covert apologetics. John Meyer, a Catholic priest and a professor of theology at University of Notre Dame, has stated. I think a lot of the confusion comes from the fact that people claim they are doing a quest for the historical Jesus when de facto they're doing theology, albeit a theology that is indeed historically informed." Meyer also wrote that in the past the quest for the historical Jesus has often been motivated more by a desire to produce an alternate Christology than a true historical search. Bart Ehrman and separately Andreas Kostenberger contend that given the scarcity of historical sources, it is generally difficult for any scholar to construct a portrait of Jesus that can be considered historically valid beyond the basic elements of his life. On the other hand, scholars such as N.T. Wright and Luke Timothy Johnson argue that the image of Jesus presented in the Gospels is largely accurate, and that dissenting scholars are simply too cautious about what we can claim to know about the ancient period. <laughs> Portraits of the Third Quest Scholars involved in the third quest for the historical Jesus have constructed a variety of portraits and profiles for Jesus. However, there is little scholarly agreement on the portraits, or the methods used in constructing them. <laughs> Mainstream views Despite the significant differences among scholars on what constitutes a suitable portrait for Jesus, the mainstream views supported by a number of scholars may be grouped together based on certain distinct, primary themes. These portraits often include overlapping elements, and there are also differences among the followers of each portrait. The subsections below present the main portraits that are supported by multiple mainstream scholars. Topic. Apocalyptic prophet. Topic. The apocalyptic prophet view primarily emphasizes Jesus preparing his fellow Jews for the end times. The works of E.P. Sanders and Maurice Casey place Jesus within the context of Jewish eschatological tradition. 
Bart Ehrman aligns himself with the century-old view of Albert Schweitzer that Jesus expected an apocalypse during his own generation, and he bases some of his views on the argument that the earliest gospel sources for which he assumes Markan priority present Jesus is far more apocalyptic than other Christian sources produced towards the end of the first century, contending that the apocalyptic messages were progressively toned down. Dale Allison does not see Jesus as advocating specific timetables for the end times, but sees him as preaching his own doctrine of apocalyptic eschatology, derived from post exilitic Jewish teachings, sees the apocalyptic teachings of Jesus as a form of asceticism. Topic. Charismatic healer Topic. The charismatic healer portrait positions Jesus as a pious and holy man in the view of Geza Vermes, whose profile draws on the Talmudic representations of Jewish figures such as Hanina ben Dosa and Ani the circle drawer and presents Jesus as a Hasid. Marcus Borg views Jesus as a charismatic man of the spirit, a mystic or visionary who acts as a conduit for the spirit of God. Borg sees this as a well-defined religious personality type, whose actions often involve healing. Borg sees Jesus as a non-eschatological figure who did not intend to start a new religion, but his message set him at odds with the Jewish powers of his time based on the politics of holiness. Both Sanders and Casey agree that Jesus was also a charismatic healer in addition to an apocalyptic prophet. Cynic <inaudible> <inaudible> philosopher <inaudible> In the Cynic Philosopher profile, Jesus is presented as a cynic, a traveling sage and philosopher preaching a cynical and radical message of change to abolish the existing hierarchical structure of the society of his time. In John Dominic Crossan's view Jesus was crucified not for religious reasons but because his social teachings challenged the seat of power held by the Jewish authorities. Burton Mack also holds that Jesus was a cynic whose teachings were so different from those of his time that shocked the audience and forced them to think, but Mack views his death as accidental and not due to his challenge to Jewish authority. Topic. Jewish Messiah Topic. The Jewish Messiah portrait of N.T. Wright places Jesus within the Jewish context of exile and return a notion he uses to build on his view of the first-century concept of hope. Wright believes that Jesus was the Messiah and argues that the resurrection of Jesus was a physical and historical event. Wright's portrait of Jesus is closer to the traditional Christian views than many other scholars, and when he departs from the Christian tradition, his views are still close to them. Like Wright, Marcus Bachmuhl and Peter Stuhlmacher support the view that Jesus came to announce the end of the Jewish spiritual exile and usher in a new messianic era in which God would improve this world through the faith of his people. Topic. Prophet of social change Topic. The prophet of social change portrait positions Jesus primarily as someone who challenged the traditional social structures of his time. Gerd Thyssen sees three main elements to the activities of Jesus as he affected social change, his positioning as the Son of Man, the core group of disciples that followed him, and his localized supporters as he journeyed through Galilee and Judea. Richard A. Horsley goes further and presents Jesus as a more radical reformer who initiated a grassroots movement. David Kaler's ideas are close to those of Horsley, but have a more religious focus and base the actions of Jesus on covenant theology and his desire for justice. Elizabeth Fiorenza has presented a feminist perspective which sees Jesus as a social reformer whose actions such as the acceptance of women followers resulted in the liberation of some women of his time. For SGF Brandon Jesus was a political revolutionary who challenged the existing socio-political structures of his time. Non-mainstream views other portraits have been presented by individual scholars. Ben Witherington supports the wisdom sage view, and states that Jesus is best understood as a teacher of wisdom who saw himself as the embodiment or incarnation of God's wisdom. Bruce Chilton sees Jesus as a Galilean rabbi. John P. Meyer's portrait of Jesus as the marginal Jew is built on the view that Jesus knowingly marginalized himself in a number of ways, first by abandoning his profession as a carpenter and becoming a preacher with no means of support, then arguing against the teachings and traditions of the time while he had no formal rabbinic training. 
Robert Eisenman proposed that James the Just was the teacher of righteousness mentioned in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and that the image of Jesus of the Gospels was constructed by the Apostle Paul as pro-Roman propaganda. Alvar Eligard proposes that while the early Pauline communities did grow from Essene communities revering a historical founder, the Essene teacher of righteousness, Paul had very little historical knowledge of the teacher, while the description of Jesus in the Gospels is entirely fictional. Chaim Maccabi proposed that Jesus was a Pharisee, that the positions ascribed to the Pharisees in the Gospels are very different from what we know of them, and in fact their opinions were very similar to those ascribed to Jesus. Harvey Falk also sees Jesus as proto-Pharisee or Essene. Morton Smith views Jesus as a magician, a view based on the presentation of Jesus in later Jewish sources. Leo Tolstoy saw Jesus as championing Christian anarchism although Tolstoy never actually used the term. Christian anarchism. Reviews of his book following its publication in 1894 coined the term. It has been suggested by psychiatrists George de Luston, William Hirsch, William Sargant, Raj Prasad, psychologist Charles Bennett Sanglay, and others that Jesus had a mental disorder or psychiatric condition. This was supported inter alia by the Church of England, based on the fact that the Gospel of Mark MK3, 21, reports that when his friends heard it, they went out to seize him, for they said, he is insane. Psychologist Vladislaw Witwicki states that Jesus had difficulties communicating with the outside world and suffered from multiple personality disorder, which made him a schizothymic or even schizophrenic type. In 1998-2000 Polish author Leszek Nowak born 1962 from Poznan authored a study in which, based on his own history of delusions of mission and overvalued ideas, and information communicated in the Gospels, made an attempt at reconstructing Jesus' psyche with the view of the apocalyptic prophet. See also Historicity of the Bible Biblical archaeology Biblical manuscript Census of Quirinius, the enrollment of the Roman provinces of Syria and Judea for tax purposes taken in the year 6 7 Christ myth theory Criterion of dissimilarity Historical background of the New Testament Historical reliability of the Gospels Historicity of Jesus Jesus Seminar Quest for the historical Jesus Sources for the historicity of Jesus Topic. Notes Topic. Topic. References Topic. Barnett, Paul W. Jesus and the Logic of History New Studies in Biblical Theology 3. Downers Grove, Illinois, InterVarsity Press. ISBN 0-85111-512-8. Bachham, Richard Jesus, A Very Short Introduction. Oxford, UK, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-957527-4. Brown, Raymond E. The Death of the Messiah, From Gethsemane to the Grave. New York, Anchor Bible. ISBN 0-385-49449-1. Brown, Raymond E. et al. The New Jerome Biblical Commentary Prentice Hall 1990 ISBN 0-13-614934-0. Bach, Darrell L., Studying the Historical Jesus, A Guide to Sources and Methods, Baker Academic, 2002. ISBN 978-0-8010-2451-1. Craffert, Peter F. and Botha, Peter J. J. Why Jesus Could Walk on the Sea But He Could Not Read and Write. Neotestamentica. 39.1, 2005. Crossan, John Dominic. Jesus, A Revolutionary Biography. HarperCollins, 1994. ISBN 0-06-061661-X. Dixon, John. Jesus, A Short Life, Lion Hudson plc, 2008, ISBN 0-8254-7802-2, ISBN 978-0-8254-7802-4, Google Books Ehrman, Bart D. Jesus, Apocalyptic Prophet of the New Millennium. New York, Oxford.
ISBN 0 19 512473 1. Fiancy, David A., Jesus the Galilean, Soundings in a First Century Life, Gorgias Press LLC, 2007, ISBN 1 59333 313 7, ISBN 978 1 59333 313 3. Google Books Fredrickson, Paula. 2000. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, A Jewish Life and the Emergence of Christianity. New York, Vintage Books. ISBN 978-0-679-76746-6. G. Nilka, Joachim, Jesus of Nazareth, Message and History, Hendrickson Publishers, 1997. Gowler, David B., What Are They Saying About the Historical Jesus? Paulist Press, 2007. Grant, Michael. Jesus, a Historian's Review of the Gospels. Scribner. S. 1977. ISBN 0 684 14889 7. Funk, Robert W. The Acts of Jesus The Search for the Authentic Deeds of Jesus. Harper San Francisco. ISBN 0 06 062978 9. Harris, by William V. Ancient Literacy. Harvard University Press, 1989. ISBN 0-674-03380-9. Meyer, John P., A Marginal Jew, Rethinking the Historical Jesus, Doubleday, v. 1, The Roots of the Problem and the Person, 1991, ISBN 0-385-26425-9. V. 2. Mentor, Message, and Miracles, 1994, ISBN 0-385-46992-6. V. 3. Companions and Competitors, 2001, ISBN 0-385-46993-4. V. 4. Law and Love, 2009, ISBN 978-0-300-14096-5 O'Collins, G. Jesus, A Portrait. Darton, Longman and Todd, 2008. ISBN 978-0232527193 O'Collins, G. Christology, A Biblical, Historical, and Systematic Study of Jesus. OUP, 2009. ISBN 978-0199557875 Sanders, E. P. Jesus and Judaism. Augsburg Fortress Publishers, 1987. Sanders, E. P. The Historical Figure of Jesus. Lane the Penguin Press, 1993. Vermes, G. Jesus the Jew, A Historian's Reading of the Gospels. SCM Classics, 2001, ISBN 0-334-02839-6. Thyssen, Gerd and Mers, Annette. The Historical Jesus, A Comprehensive Guide. Fortress Press, Minneapolis, 1998. ISBN 0-8006-3122-6. Van Voorst, Robert E., Jesus Outside the New Testament, 2000, Eerdmans, Google Books. Witherington 3, Ben. The Jesus Quest, The Third Search for the Jew of Nazareth. Intervarsity Press, 1997. ISBN 0-8308-1544-9. Wright, N.T. Christian Origins and the Question of God, a projected six-volume series of which three have been published under, v. 1, The New Testament and the People of God. Augsburg Fortress Publishers, 1992 v. 2, Jesus and the Victory of God. Augsburg Fortress Publishers, 1997 v. 3, The Resurrection of the Son of God. Augsburg Fortress Publishers, 2003, Wright, N.T. The Challenge of Jesus, Rediscovering Who Jesus Was and Us. IVP 1996 Yagjan, Lucretia. Ancient Reading. In Richard Rohrbau, ed., The Social Sciences in New Testament Interpretation. Hendrickson Publishers, 2004. ISBN 1-56563-410-1. External links Topic. Jesus Christ. Encyclopædia Britannica Online, 2009. The first section, on Jesus' life and ministry.